I got so many complaints about how difficult it is to nail a composition and that it is so hard to think about everything before you press the shutter release button on your camera. And as composition is so important and even the requirement for getting a masterpiece, today I want to show you a totally different approach which makes everything much easier for you. There's one thing in composition, understanding and uh, knowing about how to use this one thing will help you massively to bring your photos from great to outstanding. Hi my friends, very nice to see you. I'm currently working on a bigger project which is all about composition because this is that thing photographers struggle most with. And I mean this is not surprising because composition is a quite comprehensive topic. There are so many things to be considered and what I've done for you now is I try to find a way to simplify composition. You have to break it down to its basis actually. And it doesn't matter if you want to find an anchor for your image so that the viewer's eyes don't drift away or if you want to get the, the entire control over the eyes of the viewers to support the flow through, through the image or balance, depth and all these things. And I need much more by the way. Uh, there's one thing that is the basis for all that and this is visual weight. So whatever we try to do when we nail the visual weights in a composition, all these things, flow, depth, space, balance and everything else will work automatically. And that's amazing, isn't it? We will talk later about special use cases uh, for visual weight. But first of all, before we are able to use it, Let's define what visual weight is actually and which types of visual weight exist. Well, let's explain the principle of visual weight with luminosity. Now let's take a blank screen. Here are no visual weights obviously, so we feel quite lost when we look at the screen now, right? And now let's do a little bit of magic. Yeah, Christian the wizard. I will get control over your eyes right now. And I know that you looked at the right bottom area of the screen right now. Yeah, what well, is not surprising, I placed an element there. I placed a figure over a ground. But the question is, why did we look there? And uh, this is because there is a contrast between the figure and the ground. And the higher the contrast is between the figure and the ground, the stronger is the visual weight. Uh, let's make the visual weight stronger. And now let's decrease the visual weight. And by the way, also the size of visual weights is important. The smaller an element, the lower the visual weight. So we have the contrast on the one hand and the size on the other hand. And these two things define the visual weight of an element. And this is just the principle. In photography, also in painting, we have multiple elements, multiple visual weights in our composition. We have also elements above other elements. We have elements with sharp edges, but we have also elements with graduations. And graduations decrease the contrast, obviously. And ultimately, we have different visual weights in our composition. But before I tell you now in which ways you can use visual weight in your composition, let's have a look which other types of visual weights exist. Now, visual weights is not only all about luminosity. Visual weight is the visual force that appears to the contrast of light among the visual elements that compound it. And that's a quite common definition for visual weight. And if you also would consider the size, it would be right through. But the only problem is that contrast is a really stretchable term. So when we talk about contrast, we think about contrast between shadow and light. But this is just one sort of contrast, there exist many more and they have all an effect on the visual weight of elements. Now let me give you some examples here. Color contrast is quite powerful for visual weights. There will definitely come a own video about color, but just quickly, the further away two colors are on the color wheel, the higher the color contrast. So when we place elements uh, with uh, complementary colors side by side, it leads to a higher visual weight. In this image here, for instance, I supported this effect in post-processing by warming up the area in the center and cooling down the area around. And the fact is, the visual weight of the distance area got higher, so our eyes get drawn back there. 
And this image here is also a quite good example the visual weights here only give with color contrast. And when we would turn it to black and white, let's do that, we see that there are some luminosity contrast through, but this part here, for instance, has lost its visual weight totally. And when we turn the color on again, the visual weight appears. And there are even more areas in this image with the same effect, by the way, just with contrasting colors. But contrast can also be something totally different. It is something that I call story contrast. Now, this image here is a good example. From our experience, we know that trees or bushes usually need soil to grow. And the fact that this bush here grows out from naked rock increases its visual weight. We can simply draw onto anomalies in the composition. On this image here, the highest visual weight is definitely up there as the illuminated foliage up there uh, builds an amazing contrast to the dark rock right beside. But also this rock here in the middle is a quite high visual weight as it got stuck there. Yeah, it is an anomaly, a story contrast. Uh, rocks usually don't do that. They fall down and lie on the ground. Before we will talk about the strongest type of visual weights, let's talk about the second strongest visual weights in composition. It is the elements built by humans. And this image here is a good example. We don't need a high contrast between the hut and its surrounding. We tend to look at elements which got built by humans. In landscape photography, this is already related to story contrast, of course. So yeah, we have poor nature and then an element built by humans hands, which is a story contrast as well. And the same in this image here, sun, bushes, rocks, sea, but also the road with the car driving on it. And the car is a quite high visual weight, although it is just a small element in this case. But it draws the eyes because it is built by humans' hands. And the strongest type of visual weights in a composition are humans itself. Also animals, by the way. And uh, the reason therefore is simply that we are social. When we see another person, we look at her or him, it doesn't really matter. In this image here, we look at that person, me obviously, and also the dragon's face up there is a high visual weight. And this is supported by the direction where the person looks to. And very important also is the experience of the viewers. It can increase or decrease the visual weight of elements. Just a quick example. The sun in this image is an extreme visual weight and this, although the contrast around it, is not the highest one in this image. But we know from our experience that the sun is the brightest thing in the world. Yeah, we can't look into the sun without damaging our eyes. So when you include the sun into your composition, always consider that its visual weight will automatically be higher also when there are other elements in your composition with a higher contrast. Now, before I show you how to use all these things for flow, balance, how to get more depth into your photos just with using visual weights, my friends, if you like this video, please consider to give me a thumb up. It helps me, it helps the algorithm, and it helps also other photographers out there to find this video better on YouTube. Thank you therefore. Well, now we know what visual weight is and uh, now let's have a look at how we can use visual weights for getting powerful compositions. Visual weights affect so many methods in composition and uh, one of them is the visual flow. We talked already about that the visual weights draw the viewer's eyes like a magnet, I really like that. And this fact can be used easily to get control over the viewer's eyes to lead them to special areas in our composition. I will not go into detail why this is important. I made already a video about that. Let's just focus on how you can use that. In this image here, I got the sun illuminating the waterfall back there, but it is surrounded by shadow and this contrast leads to a high visual weight and our eyes get drawn back there. And also the water in the foreground is bright and has a contrast to the water in the pool down there and also to the shadowed area behind it and also this waterfall is a high visual weight. The same with the patterns down there in the pool and ultimately we look at these areas. Our eyes move from one visual weight to the next one. And as these visual weights have interesting textures as well, our eyes can even rest there and engage deeper with them, what holds the viewer longer in the frame. And this is a quite powerful method to lead the viewer's eyes around in your composition. 
but there's much more you can do to support the flow in your image and how to get the entire control over the fever size. And I made already a video about that, I will link it up there for you. Oh, and one important thing here, as visual weights draw the viewer's eyes, I would suggest not to place them straight at the edges of your frame, otherwise the, image, um, otherwise the eyes could get misled out of the frame. But more about that in the mentioned video. Well, we want to hold the viewer as long as possible in our image. A good method here is to use as much space as possible to lead him around. Yeah, I mean, the longer the distance as the eyes are led around, the longer the viewer stays in the image, obviously. So to achieve that, we want to spread visual weights over our whole composition. But be careful here, this could lead into a big problem. And when there's a strong visual weight, let's say on the left side of an image, we need another visual weight on the right side as well to balance the visual weight, because otherwise the image would, would get out of balance. The illuminated middle here on the left side is a quite high visual weight, but the middle and the trees on the right side are not as much illuminated through and they are a bit softer due to the haze, but that area is bigger, which increases the visual weight on the right hand side as well, and ultimately the image is well balanced. Also in this image here, the chromatic red sky on the left side is a quite high visual weight, but the reflecting clouds on the right side are also a heavy visual weight, which balances the scene here. One more example for balance, and this is a pro tip now my friends. In this image here, the illuminated huts at the right are an extreme visual weight. But the image is anyway balanced. How can that be? I mean, there's nothing at the left hand side, right? Now, there's one additional thing we should consider about visual weights. Whenever there is an element looking to any direction, the visual weight gets shifted a tiny bit to that direction. Or you could also imagine that the negative space on that side where the element is looking to gets a visual weight in that case as well. So in this image, the negative space on the left side balances the illuminated huts on the right side, which is the positive space in that case. This might sound a little bit complicated, but again, it's just a pro tip. Yeah, you know, I always try to keep my videos interesting for each skill level of photography. Well, now we know about balance, we know about flow, but visual weight can do much more. And one of the biggest problems in photography is actually that we try to compress our three-dimensional world into a two-dimensional photo. So if we don't consider the right methods, our photos look flat and boring, like a sheet of paper. But there are ways to get depth into our photographs. And also here, visual weights can play an important role for, for depth. In this image here, there is a high contrast between the foreground middle and the shadowed midground. The same with the light spot in the distance. We get a visual connection between these visual weights and this emphasizes the sense of depth in this image. Now let's take the origin again, now that's the title of the image. I mentioned the high visual weight in the distance already, but there are more visual weights in this image. First of all, the illuminated rock in the foreground has a high contrast to the dark water in the midground. We have a luminosity contrast. And as I shifted the greens a tiny bit to yellow in post-processing, I even increased the color contrast a tiny bit to increase the visual weight. And ultimately, we get drawn to the rock and we get this nice connection to the distance rocks, which are much smaller. And the different sizes get more obvious and this emphasizes the sense of depth in this image. The same with the size of the waterfall here on the right side, by the way, where we have also a high contrast between the bright forming water and the dark water and even the darker rock here in the foreground. The waterfalls in the distance are much smaller, what gives us this fantastic sense of depth. A visual weight helps us to emphasize the right elements. In this case, we get a nice size comparison and this leads into depth. Also, when you just print it on a flat piece of paper. Another pro tip here, also different sizes contrast to each other. And this is what I call size contrast. I think I should make one more video just about contrast because there are so many more types of contrast uh, as I have already mentioned and each type of contrast uh, leads uh, to visual weight actually. However, you can use visual weights for getting depth in your photos. But there is a lot more of methods to get depth and I made already a video about depth. 
where I even revealed seven different methods for getting depth. And I will link it up here for you. And by the way, visual weights can also help you to find compositions out of location. You just need to look for contrasts and anomalies. How easy is that? You see, each method of composition gets much easier to understand when you consider visual weights. And I can't stress you enough how important composition is. When you're able to nail your compositions, there's just a small step to a masterpiece. So I can highly recommend to engage deeper with composition. And for the case that you struggle with composition, you know about visual weights now. So from now on, everything about composition will be much easier for you to understand. And if you want to improve your compositional skills, Watch this video here. My friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, please give me a thumb up. And thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to tune in next week. There will come a fantastic video as well. See you next time. Bye.